Hi everyone, it's the Ticket to Christ. Thank you for tuning back in. We are still talking about overcoming greed and excess. We're in 1 Kings chapter 11, and we're looking at King Solomon, and he is a good person to study out um, if you're struggling with greed and excess. So uh, starting from verse 1 in 1 Kings chapter 11, it says, But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the, the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidon Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them. Neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. So we're going to pause here, and you can read, um, study through Solomon for yourself. Of course, his excess is sexual sin, sexual excess. Um, uh, he fell into, um, they would call it a sexual addiction in modern days, but I believe in the Bible it's debauchery, right? Um, so um, the sad thing about Solomon was he was a man who God appeared to him and God spoke directly to him twice, right? And gave him incredible wisdom, incredible insight. And um, I remember when I first read this account about how Solomon's heart turned away from God, I was shocked as a young, younger Christian. I was just shocked that that was unexpected. I, I didn't know that. I had always heard of the wisdom of Solomon and he wrote the Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes and Song of Songs. And then when I read that, nobody told me this chapter in the Bible and I read it, I, was, I remember being very shocked. But I think that, you know, it when you if you're stuck, if you're struggling with excess, um, this is where it can lead to if unchecked. And notice again, Solomon was full of wisdom, discernment. He had tremendous wealth. There was he wanted for nothing. And um, his heart turned away from God because of the wives he chose. He it, it says his wives turned his of course his his wives turned his turned away his heart. And I'm thinking, of course, <laughs> Solomon, what did you expect? 700, what? That's 1,000 women and 300 concubines. Um, 1,000 women. He had the, had these as, as in his uh, house, I guess. <laughs> that's who he was maintaining. When did he have time, right? But that's what happens when you're a hoarder. I don't think that he was spending quality time with a thousand women. It was probably a lot of sexuality. And then that woman went to the harem, right? And next, and then next, and then next. And then before he knew it, it was a thousand. And then a lot of times um, kings in those places married women to form alliances with other nations. Um, so that he probably was doing as well, which is God told him not to do that. In verse 2, it said that the Lord warned them, right? Don't marry strange women. What are they call, Why are they called strange women? It's because they don't worship God. They don't worship the one true God, right? They, these are the women whose, um, you know, whose nations worship these false uh, demonic uh, gods. Uh, idols. I, I won't even call, uh, call use that term God, right? But they worship these fall, de false, really demonic idols that required um, like like infant sacrifice. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've read about some of these uh, pagan gods require a lot of perversion. It's just really a form of Satanism. Um, and they, they wrap it up in a different name, right? So those were the wives that he married. And so they would 
there's nothing in common, right? And so one is going to influence the other. And of course, women are very persuasive. And a man with all that wealth and all that wisdom, after a while, he just, I guess, got bored and um, started looking after other things and his heart turned when he was old. That is, it's so tragic. All, your, all of his life running his race and then ended so badly, you know. And so this, um, Solomon's life, if sexual excess, or if this, you know, anything to do with sexuality or out of boundary sexual sin um, is something that is a temptation for you. Solomon is someone to study through because you definitely want to get a handle on this. It does not lead to a good place. He caused the whole nation to be destroyed. He did evil in the eyes of God and, um, you know, never repented. If he had repented, it would have been different, but he didn't repent. He, um, you know, kept on with his strange wives. You know, he burnt, it followed them in their, in their awful worship. His heart was turned away from God and um, God wrenched the um, lineage, wrenched the kingship away from him. But he said, I'm not going to do it in your lifetime because of your father, David, I'll do it in your son's lifetime. And so that's what happened. And it's so, it's so tragic because David fought so hard and suffered so long to establish the kingdom of God and to really establish Israel in a good position. And then Solomon goes, takes the, the throne and blows it away on 1,000 women who worshiped false gods, right? Um, because of the excess in his heart and in his life that went unchecked. But when you think about it, when you even look at his father, David, a man after God's own heart, you see in that whole male culture there at that time, a lot of that same sexual sin not left that was left unchecked. So you see that influence even with David, because David committed adultery uh, with Bathsheba, took another man's wife and had that man um, murdered. But uh, he had a different heart in that he repented. He was broken before the Lord. And so God forgave him. Um, but you see the, that, you know, kind of attitude and of, of excess with women, even in, in uh, Solomon's father, David, and um, so you can see how it could have a trickle down impact. And so when we're living in any type of excess and that we're not really dealing with, um, you know, looking for uh, fleshly pleasure, uh, it could have diet consequences on our lineage, on those who come after us, on those who we love, those around us. It could have a, a tremendous impact on the lives of people. And for, for this particular uh, situation, Solomon, it had devastating consequences for the whole nation of Israel and for, for generations, right? Um, the, because there was never a king like David after David, right? In, in the sense, in the human sense um, in Israel, I don't think there was anybody who came after him None. It, after that, it was the prophets that you had to look to to get righteous examples, you know. And of course, until the Lord came, right, uh, to earth. Um, and so um, this is a good, I think, topic to study through um, over being greedy and excessive, not being satisfied with who God has provided for you. I love the person you're with. Uh, the, the, the man or woman that God has put in your life, that's the one that God put in your life. Turn your eyes to them only. Don't go looking around at other people's husbands or other people's wives or other women because um, that's it's not going to satisfy. It's just a big lie. You know, the problem is you. You not being content. You not loving and respecting yourself enough to really value the person that God has given to you to love, if that's your struggle. Um, and so that's something to definitely rein in. If you uh, have a flirtatious eye, 
if you're somebody who secretly loves the admiration of other women that aren't that it that's or men if you're someone who's always needing male attention or female attention that is a, an excess spirit there that you know in the sexual lusty um arena the whole that type of envir environment that's what it breeds you know and so that is a very critical area of your life to get a hold of and solomon is a good person to study through in in terms of how it ends um so that's it from me on this one i hope that uh if that's something you struggle with that you pursue looking into studying through solomon where he started how he ended up where he where he ended up and um i'll drop some scriptures below as well as to what he should you know things to study through to kind of put that in check so that's it from me beloved i hope this bless you in some small way take care